Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining today. This is your host Nino inviting you to explore a new operating system running on top of MS-DOS called TSX32, which is being installed on the Pocket 386, a modern made DOS machine with eight megabytes of RAM, a 386 compatible processor, a two gigabyte compact flash hard disk, and so on and so forth. <laughs> a true pleasure to operate and which is offering a lot of possibilities in terms of systems experimentations, though of course always be forewarned to make a copy of your compact flash card installation before plunging ahead into adventure. But today's adventure is indeed quite harmless as this system is nicely cooperating with DOS. Well, sort of, besides that it doesn't really tolerate expanded and extended memory managers because it uses its own thing. But other than that, you can get into this. <laughs> and here we are having an unlicensed copy of DSX32, <laughs> but which is running fine for 30 minutes. And in today's video, we shall be getting into how to install this. This was a completely experimental adventure for me. And if any one of you has more experience with this system, please go ahead and share your views in the comments. And now, enjoy. In today's episode, I am humbly inviting you to explore with me the TSX32 operating system, or perhaps its shareware version TSX Lite by s and Computer Systems, presently apparently defunct, with the website sandage.com, indeed, but whose website seems to be still available under webarchive.org in a relatively complete fashion, only that I find some of the downloads to not be working. But other than that, you can see quite some information here, and TSX seems to be a family of operating systems, starting with the PDP-11 and continuing into the x86 family, somewhere situated between old DEC operating systems such as RT-11 or VMS, which, you know, in novel times even exists for x86, as open VMS for x86, and on the other hand something like DOS. So here you are finding on the main website of s and h computer systems like if you visit them on webarchive.org and under the address sandage.com you're finding quite some overview of tsx32 and when you are clicking here on the comprehensive information you may find that among other things it should be a running on 386 processors with 8 megabytes of memory. Disk space requirements are a little bit dubious, given that here they are writing 20 megabyte, but in the documentation of TSX Lite only 10 are required, so that might just be version dependent. But anyway, that seems to be a worthy experiment that unfortunately doesn't seem to have left all that many traces across the internet. Here, Wikipedia has some information about TSX32, as well as its predecessor, TSX Plus, for the PDP-11. And yeah, here you, say, you see, and is based on DEX RT11 single user real time operating system. So this is something like multi-user RT11, but for the um, x86. And yes, indeed, as of 2021, S&H appears to be defunct. So we have to 
make do with what we find and I shall show you a little bit what I found. So there is some newspaper article which is a little bit getting into TSX written in 1995 and the main comparison the, drive, the author is doing is with VMS the way I would have understood it and when we further search for files of TSX Lite you may find some in annex.retroarchive.org slash cd-rom slash night owl minus 015 so there in zero slash zero zero one a slash index html <laughs> there you seem to find things like tsx 420a zip tsx 420b zip and so on until d so this seems to be one set of tsx light products and again you find again on annex.retroarchive.org slash cd-rom slash peer minus zero four slash zero thirty three slash index html there seems to be another set of tsx lite but this is version 4.11 furthermore on the website of uh, huh, where are they where were they of s and h anyway wherever i put it yeah there is a section in the description of tsx-32 where there is written a release version and i thought why not so i'm clicking it and what i see is a list of files of which i tried to click the second one and couldn't get it Right, so this is the non-archived portion of the web page. But when I googled the file name, I thought, well, if that's the name, then let's see who has it. There did turn up exactly one web page, <laughs> this one, which seems to have here sections of TSX. However, they don't seem to be sections of TSX Lite. This seems to be full TSX. So TSX 6 even has a nice all files zip and well with various entities thus available which are hosting files of interest I may actually try installing it and to that purpose I will either try to copy the contents to some folder on the compact flash card and try to install from there or if for some reason TSX should insist on floppies I will try to do a virtual installation over Camu, the virtual machine software and now let us attempt it I am greedy here in so far as I'm going to try to install actual TSX 32 6 rather than the TSX light version. I have transferred the files onto the disk of the Pocket 386 and we shall now attempt to pull it through. So this is the directory I created, TSX inst, and here you see everything. I shall now try to run install. Yes, we want to install TSX32. Look at the directory. This is one of those deck influences. VMS also like to put directories in brackets. Do we want to continue despite having EMM386? Yes. <laughs> How much RAM? Well, I'm not sure. Will this be something issuey? But I'm just going to say the truth. Eight. The answers following the questions will be used to 
built the system generation file TSX32 GEN. I love this because this is like the old SysGen <laughs> name, which deck systems were using for system generation. So again, a little deck inspiration, TSGen, yeah. Do I want to use the print spooler? Mm, yes. The window print facility, yes. You know what, if I don't know something, I'm just going to say yes, like for PC term, Relisys term, or TSX term. I have no clue what these are. However, the X modem to Z modem protocols are definitely something we want to have. And is there a mouse installed? Let's say no. Is this correct? Press yes. And now I shall supply information about the serial multiplexors with space to tag and enter to continue. And I can just press enter to continue the installation if I don't have serial multiplexors. I believe I do not have serial multiplexors. And now I shall supp supply information about other devices. Again, space and enter. I have no other devices. Contain an SCSI host adapter. No. Ready to begin copying files. Press a key to continue. Enter. All right, all right. So this is exactly in the way one is used to seeing things nowadays where you're having individual file progress indicators, as well as a general progress indicator. So we are having here the TSX32 sys directory, <laughs> which we shall be exploring right afterwards. And what I don't have is any form of identification. Like, I hope it will not in the end ask me for some form of serial or anything like that, because otherwise I will be a bit checkmated and likely will have to return to TSX Lite. In general, I find it a pity to have something so interesting, you know, sort of rot away in darkest corners of the internet, simply because it was so well hidden from the outer world that in the end, after the demise of its company, the piece of software itself into which evidently countless hours have gone becomes, yeah, derelict and forgotten. Oh, we're getting all sorts of programs with the extension exp. <laughs> Spy exp. Oh, not at all sounding weird. <laughs> Suspicious. but quite some material seems to be extracted. I wonder what the hell really means hardware abstraction layer in this context. Okay, so we're having here, ooh, disk geom. So there must be something concerning the disk geometry that we might be able to run. And Telnet, Telnet would be lovely. And we are apparently done. Press a key to continue.
Good. How many fixed drives are in your computer? One. Wait a minute. <laughs> yeah, it's a regular IDE. Whew. You know, given that this is supposed to be a system running on DOS, it, it, it had me for a moment. I was afraid <laughs> when it starts asking about my drive that it wants to do things to it. What I really love is our hours are nine to five. So this is really a nine to five thing. Run TSX to start TSX32. Ladies and gentlemen, the moment of truth. Oh, this will interfere with starting TSX. Please check your config sys file and remove any device, loads of extended memory or protected mode extender products and then reboot. Okay, so we will need to be having a sort of <laughs> two config sys files. And I shall do that actually. Copy config dot sys into config. How shall I call this? Config win. And copy auto exec dot but into auto exec dot win because these are the normal files I'll be using. I don't even have one ah, because it is out exec. Okay, auto exec dot but into auto exec dot win. The thing is that I want to specify with this ending that these are the default ones which I am using to start Windows. And now let us have a look at config dot sys. And let us rem all of those chem and whatnot things that we are having here. The chem memory manager would be, of course, interesting. DOS equal to high UMB. I mean, I can leave that. I don't think it will do anything, though. And RM for the USB drive. Okay, let's assume we don't have it. And the shell shall simply be command.com. to equal to C backslash command. Let's make it cute. Why is it not cute? Okay. And yes, go to C colon backslash as a argument. Why is shift not working? <sighs> shift is not working. The question mark is working. Okay, the right shift is and the left shift is not working. But now caps lock is off it. Everything is fine. Anyway, save configs and open auto exec dot but the path of chem doesn't bother and then let's reboot now Okay, that is a, just a completely clean command prompt. I will now change to tsx32sys and then run tsx. Now 
this site is not licensed to run TSX term. Well, then it's not big deal. Uh, this is an unlicensed copy of TSX32 whose evaluation period has expired. The system will reboot in 30 minutes. Press a key to continue. You know what? I don't think I will spend all that much time in here. So <laughs> if it is 30 minutes, then it is 30 minutes. So Dir is working. Oh my gosh, is that a lot. And we are getting here some disk designator very much like in a deck operating system. Our prompt has turned to lowercase to remind us that we are now in TSX. And <laughs> I may I may have to read a manual to see how this is even used. I don't know even, does it have anything like an editor? Will asterisks work? Add. Hmm? Are we having any sort of editor? cdump.exp. Maybe I want to see what are the exp files. Dear asterisk.exp. Well, <laughs> I don't know what to say, but there is something which is called TSXWin, and I want to try that out. Starting Windows for TSX32. What? Okay. Okay. <laughs> so it can start Windows. Uh, but the mouse lock seems to be active somehow. Uh, what was it? FNF5? And the mouse shall be FN5, external PS2, yes, please. Alt F, escape, escape, Alt F. Does this work? Why, why does it not work? Alt F5, external PS2, Alt 5, internal keyboard. Yeah, it should be a keyboard. Alt F. My arrow keys don't work. I don't know why, I'll just press X to exit Windows and OK to get out of this session. But that did not seem to work. If I say exit, will I exit TSX32? Not obviously, right? If I say mem, what happens? Oh, that's interesting. That's a completely different display. And it seems that, well, one can generally maybe use TSX. Let me try with running <laughs> xlisp small, the small version of my favorite Lisp interpreter, whether it will start within TSX. Well, it looks very much like it is hanging that system. <laughs> So xlisp is not going to be a much used program in here. Very well, then in this case, I will have to reboot and I may as well consider whether I want to stick with TSX32. And I may also explore it a little bit as to what one can do with that system. But I hope that today's video gave you a bit of an overview as to what sort of weirdness exists out there that one can put onto one's DOS system. And with that, thank you for having been here today. Hope to greet you see soon again for further adventures. If not a subscriber yet, please consider joining our friendly community. Thank you for watching and from me, goodbye.